Okay, the ideal gas law tutorial um, gives you better ideas of like solid liquids gases. And as always, I will not answer the questions unless I feel it benefits you and the tutorial or to give you a better understanding. And I let you watch the videos on your own. So let's talk about the ideal gas law. Briefly go over this. So let's figure out what we are going to do and what we're going to talk about. So I will show you this one. So this is a sample of gas inside a container. We have nitrogen and oxygen, two different gases. And pressure increases. The container volume is decreased. The temperature is increased. Gas is added to the container. Pressure decreases. The container volume increased. The temperature decreased. Gas is removed. Just a quick example. OK, so Boyle's Law, first one. So Boyle's law describes the relationship between the pressure and the volume of a gas. This law states that the volume of a fixed quantity of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure of the gas if the temperature remains constant. So here's our formula. So basically all it says, like our last sentence right here. So as the volume of gas increases, the pressure decreases. That's basically all we need to know about that, and vice versa. So Volume decreases, pressure increases, all that fun stuff. Charles Law describes the relationship between volume and temperature of gas. Okay. So it directly states, so the law states that volume of a fixed amount of gas is directly proportional to its temperature if the pressure remains constant. Okay. So basically kind of our same situation that we got going on here. All right, now his law states that equal volumes of gas at the temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of particles. Okay, so we have another formula here. Let's get into this, combining gas laws. Now, how are they all related to each other? Well, they're related to each other somehow. So let's review the definition of pressure force per unit. Hmm, okay. All right, here's our little puzzle piece of all three laws connected to each other. Here's their formulas and how are they all connected? Obviously we know that they are because pressure, volume, all of that fun stuff is related together. Here is another formula. Okay, changing variables. Um, we'll let you do this part on your own. Ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. P is the pressure of the gas, V, is the volume of the gas, T is the temperature of the gas, N stands for the number of moles, R is the gas constant. So here's our formula, and here's what it looks like written down as well. So this is the relationship that we've been discussing called the ideal gas law. Here's the equation and how it's written. Ideal gas law, here's some examples. What you do here is if you know the numbers, but we don't know N, how do we solve it? Here's how we solve for n right here. Substitute the known values, and that's how we do it. I will also have a little mini lesson on this as well. Hmm, okay, now here we have another example. We have volume in liters, pressure in kilopascals, mole is the amount of moles, and temperature for this would be in Kelvin. So we would see the temperature written in Kelvin for something like this. All right, significant figures. That was back to our significant figure lesson. If this um, the diagram is confusing, I recommend you go back to the mini lesson I did about significant figures, and that will clear things up even more for you. Gauge pressure and absolute pressure. Absolute pressure is the actual pressure of the gas inside a container without reference to the pressure on the outside. Gauge pressure, the difference in gas pressure between the inside and the outside of the container as measured by the pressure gauge. Think like putting air in your tire, say your car tire or your bike tire, or putting air in like a basketball, volleyball, soccer ball, something like that. More significant figures, I'll have you answer this stuff on your own. Mixtures of gases. Okay, this is just showing you 
different gases. So we have oxygen right here at the end and the components right here. So this is the component of air around us. And that we have add water, add carbon dioxide equals air. Fun stuff. Okay, I'll let you do these videos. This just shows force. Again, force is push or pull on an object. And then here's another example of our formula. And remember, this breaks it down when Kelvin, you're converting temperature, C for Celsius, so whatever it is, Celsius plus 273.15. And that converts it to Kelvin. Fun stuff. All right, again, it talks about significant figures. And this question, we'll let you answer the question on your own. It's like, it's talking about pressure and temperature. Hmm, okay. We'll go over to here. So here we have another article. We'll let you read the article on your own. It is, it talks a little bit about hydrogen and nitrogen here. Okay, I'll we'll go to the next slide and the questions. Once you read the article, you should have most of the answers from that. And hopefully that clears up the ideal gas law just a little bit. So here is just the example of pressure, volume, and number of moles, ideal gas, constant, and the temperature in Kelvin. So solving for the unknowns, here are the formulas that you would use to solve for the unknowns, so just like this. And the temperature must always be expressed in Kelvins for this. Here's an example of how you mix gases together. And hopefully that clears it up for you a little bit and hope you enjoyed.